Hey guys, Pat, Iron Trap Garage, and finally, today we're gonna do a video on the Sweetheart Roadster. You guys have been bugging me, giving me crap as I ask you to do, and it is time to start working on Sweetheart Roadster again. So, um, I kind of gave myself a kick in the butt to get uh, working on this car uh, by selling the original door. So I still had the original door on this side. We had spun the car around, um, so it's easier to work this winter on this side of the car. It still needs work. And I sold the original doors to someone that needed them, and that left a big giant hole here, which uh, you know is an eyesore to look at. So um, now we are ready to work on it. So the hardest part of this, and this is not the way I would I would suggest to do it, would be building a part and then waiting a year to build the next one because it's like somebody else actually built the part. So I have to go back, take some measurements, look at my old videos just to remember how we went about building the driver's side door. But what we're gonna do is build this door and start getting the ball rolling on this car. Um, we're really on the downward slope of the major metal work. Once we get over this door, the rest of it's honestly pretty straightforward stuff of doing patch panels and, and uh, some customization uh, type work, which is a lot more fun than you know building from nothing. So I'm gonna work on taking some measurements on the other side, get some raw material set here, and we're gonna first build the inner structure of this door.
right, so uh, after a bunch of work, we had probably like a day's worth of work of just trying to take measurements off the other door and figure out how we were going to get everything to kind of sit on its own. Um, so what I ended up doing was, um, I'm not sure how much we covered this in the, in the other videos, but I ended up milling slots into this box tubing. I'm using one and a half, I think it is, by one inch box tubing that's eighth wall that we can drill and tap into it. Um, and uh, it's also nice and sturdy. So we use that on the A and B pillars for where our latch and our hinges over using wood. Um, so I ended up running zip screws into each corner. I took measurements with a depth gauge of how the inner structure was sitting. Um, and we got that all kind of measured out and everything's sitting with the inner structure just like the other side. Uh, I'm using like a metal roller that I set the gap underneath um, and all that stuff's looking pretty good. So that was something I did different than the last time. I, I know the last time the, the inner skin was falling all over the place. It was hard to get it to stay where I wanted it to. So by doing this, we have it locked in and I can just weld those holes up when it's done. So now with this box tubing hanging on the hinges here, I can just basically hinge it in until it touches the sheet metal and then we can trace and, and drill our holes and everything so that the screws can run in and hold it in place. And then once I have the door actually hinging, we're going to use another piece of box tubing here, the same, that's going to go into the B-pillar area. And that's going to be our area that we can mount our door latch to um, and, uh, and drill and tap into all of that stuff. So that should, that should be a little bit easier than figuring out this hinging portion. So um, I'm going to work on getting all the holes drilled and and get that box to me and hope we have something that's swinging and latching here soon. All right, so we got the door hanging and swinging and what you saw in the last shot, I was just checking to make sure there are two like zip screw holes that we had made for the angle of how the inner structure needs to sit. Lined up, it did, everything's pretty good. I have a couple little adjustments up at the top corner to make, which we're not gonna worry about right now. Um, the next thing, the reason I do it this way, this is another way, just because I'm better at seeing how things work and you know, uh, rather than trusting just doing simply measuring off the other door, now what I'm doing is kind of just going, these pieces will tell us where they need to be. So I screwed, I got these uh, stainless door catches and uh, these are Model T, again, anybody missed the first videos, these are Model T Roadster latches. I, uh, these are the same thing that's on the uh, Free T. They are the stock latches that were on the Free T, but I really like, especially because I don't want to run outside door handles, I like how these have the little arm on them, very simplistic, and uh, the nice thing is they actually work with the, um, the latches, the catch uh, for Model A Roadsters as well. So not anything different needs to be done. So um, I have that here. So what I do now is, it's nice, is we can just put this latch right on the catch like this. And now we can swing the door shut and we can roughly see where our latch needs to be now. 
So obviously the latch is, you know, I can move it around some, but now it's gonna tell me like the outline of roughly where, roughly where this hinge needs to land or the latch needs to land. And then we can start making some, drilling some holes, get that box tubing fit in. And what I try and do is get these two side holes um, first. So we'll try and get these two holes into the box tubing so it's holding the latch and we can actually latch the door. And then we have to make a separate little like bracket that will spot weld inside the door um, structure that these four screws will go into. But if we get these two in, into the box tubing, it'll be nice and strong. Same thing, we can kind of fixture it in there with some screws. Um, and then we can try and get this to latch and make sure everything works before we go crazy welding or welding any of the box tubing or anything in. So I'm gonna line this out, get the box tubing in, and we should be able to get it to latch. All right, so uh, in the last couple shots you saw, I was uh, I was spot welding or, or plug welding uh, this little brace I made in. Um, we also got the box tubing all mounted in. It is threaded in so that it is fixed in place and we can eventually spot weld it uh, to the door skin. Uh, the hinge is also uh, the same way. That's all bolted in and good. Um, and now we have an inner structure that opens and latches. This is like such a huge thing for me on all these projects <laughs> to have doors that open and shut. So uh, the door, the inner structure has some twist to it. I showed it in uh, repairing Aaron's uh, Roadster in that a video we did, I don't know, a summer or two ago, um, how you can like twist the inner structures when you cut the skin off to adjust things because um, they're kind of floppy. So this thing, obviously I can do that to get it sitting. I have those screw holes that I made for where I want the door to sit and uh, that matches the other side. And it doesn't take much at all. It's just a little flex here. So that's, that's not a big deal. Um, so now that I got this all latching, the last thing I'm gonna do for this video is just uh, get these flanges all set on the door. Um, so what I need to do, I've already traced along the back side of the door here and also on the front side, uh, basically put a marker right on the edge of the body and ran it down. That gives me that shape. And then I'm also gonna come back with a scribe to give a finer point um, and scribe. And, and then I will cut this flange off right there, the overlap. And then I'm gonna weld the flange back on that will match that. The reason I'm doing that is just because of A, skill level, and B, time and the tools that I have. So you could fold this flange over and do it all out of one piece. But what I found is, um, A, with my skill level, uh, it ends up getting a little out of control and I spend a lot of time getting it back into the shape I want where I can do it a lot quicker by just cutting it off and TIG welding it back up. And B, with having the tools that I have without having um, 
some power tools that would be a lot like a power hammer or something or a pull max would be a lot quicker to shape the piece or put it back into the correct shape. Um, I found that for me, it's easier to do it this way. Um, probably the same for you. So if you're trying to make these flanges because it has a kind of like a compound curve to it, um, it's really hard to get this flange to go in the right direction. So I've done it before in the past, um, but I end up spending like a whole day re-correcting it where I could probably like in an hour or two have it cut off, welded on, looks good and we can be moving on to the next step. So that's uh, sometimes you just gotta choose speed. So I'm gonna work again is marked, cut. Um, we also have the corners down here that I have to add those flanges to. I'm gonna kind of hold that till um, the end and then we should have a door that's ready to accept the skin after a little bit more work. Alright, so I did a ton of welding that was like real delicate welding where we were doing all the flanges on this. It is just way quicker to do it that way because I could just cut the flanges and as you saw I made really large pieces so I didn't have to worry about like burning away or having major warpage. So uh, by leaving those real long pieces on either side I was able to do that and then just trim it to exactly what I needed which made things really simple and then I went around and welded everything, did the bottoms and everything is good. It's super solid. Opens, shuts, latches nicely. And uh, I'd actually say this one probably went as it should, went a little quicker than the other one because I could use the other one as my guide. Um, it was just, a lot of it was just a head scratching to remember exactly what I had done along the way. And surprisingly, I didn't have to watch my old videos. I was able to figure all of this out without watching the videos. That might not be the case with the door skin, we'll see. Uh, but now that I have everything, um, put together and welded and all that stuff. I hit the whole inside with self-etching primer just so everything's sealed up. Um, and when we're ready to start putting the door skin on, I don't have to worry about waiting for all that to dry. So 
it is pretty much good to go and I de the, in the inside and all that stuff so it looks good. And now we can start building the skin off of this. Um, we will, with the Model A's, um, for anybody that doesn't remember, the Model A's overlap on the quarter panel here and you wrap the skin around, it overlaps, but it does have a gap here, so, uh, and then a gap, of course, at the bottom. So it makes it a little bit easier when we're building the skin, but I, again, I measured off of this side so I can pretty much follow the shape of the inner door structure, and it should make things fairly easy when we go to put that skin on. So, uh, huge progress on the Sweetheart Roadster. For everybody that's been yelling at me, I'm finally working on it, and I'm gonna keep focusing on this car probably for the rest of the winter. So I'm gonna start getting the skin, get the patches done, the wheel well on this side, and just start working away and around the car. And uh, hopefully in the spring, we'll be ready to strip the rest of the remaining paint off here, get it all down to bare metal, and just start working towards making this all solid and straight and, and uh, uh, on its way to being a nice car. So thank you guys for following along, really appreciate it. Catch you later.